last player of the day before we get to a little bonus content, but we will do our normal three and a little bonus content after that. But the last day for our last one for our normal three that we do, Puka Nakua. Uh, Dynasty League football, August start of ADP was wide receiver 79. Keep trade cut has him at wide receiver 66. A fantastic first day in the NFL. 15 targets, 10 catches, 119 yards, 16.9 half PPR points in week one. Just an incredible day without Cooper Cup there. Basically being the Cooper Cup for Matthew Stafford and doing a darn good job of doing it. Um, Also, Cooper Cup placed on IR, which means this is the kind of setup that's going to be there for the Rams for at least the first four weeks. And... I don't know, like, I wasn't a Puka guy coming into the season. I, like, I could understand why he could ascend the depth chart, just because the depth chart was nothing, really. You know, like, Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell, that's stopping no one. Um, But it's hard for me to, like, come to grips with, uh, is he just the wide receiver one for the, for the Rams now? And what does that mean? Uh, I don't expect him to repeat this performance, but could he get eight, nine targets every week as the wide receiver one until Cooper comes back? comes back what does that mean for us like i think the the range of outcomes got even wider than it was with him coming in as a prospect because we saw this performance and now this means a lot even when uh cooper cup comes back um we've seen two wide receivers succeed in this offense before why can't he be robert woods as he was compared to during prospect season we know that he can take some handoffs and do some work like that Brian, are you a Puka Nakua stan? What do we think? It might surprise you that I am kind of squarely in the middle on it. Uh, so I, I talk a lot to Matt Hicks of Rookie Big Boy during rookie season, which I guess is really 12 months now. But, you know, he was he was a Puka guy. He kind of put Puka on, on the map for me. So, I you know, I, I think I was a little above market kind of the whole time, you know, and making the, the, the case for him. Um, you know, I think there was – plays in that game where you kind of saw he was kind of uh is what he is a, a fifth round wide receiver that isn't like super uh talent doesn't have super athleticism and is kind of finding his way in the in the nfl but you know if you've got mcveigh and stafford working with you and you and you're giving the opportunity you know i think you kind of like uh, start a little bit uh, uh, ahead than maybe some other wide receivers in that situation <clears throat> you know there is hope, as you said, because he's more versatile than just being, you know, Cooper Cup light, sippy cup or whatever, right? Um, but at the same time, you, you know, he kind of is what he is, right? He's a, he's a, you know, he's a day three wide receiver and, you know, is kind of a middling prospect. Uh, he's, he's a gamer, you know, he's, he's, I, I, he's a, a, a scrappy player. I think, I think he's going to be a serviceable wide receiver three in fantasy uh, for a while, uh, I think, you know, after Cup retires or whatever. Uh, you know, I think when it comes to what are you doing with him, it's, a, it's an interesting situation because, as you said, there's almost like an expiration date on on this optimism because Cup is coming back in, in, in a few weeks, and there's really only so many Robert Woods touches he can get, right? Um, and your league mates kind of know that too, right? So – Let me put it to you this way. Tell me how I did. I traded him today, him and a 24 fourth for Michael Wilson of the Cardinals and the 25 second. I mean, I basically got a 25 second and and a free roll out of somebody I drafted, like maybe in the fourth round of that rookie draft. So, yeah, I think I think a lot of people are going to hear that trade and say, like, what are you crazy? Like after this performance, why would you do that? But I know something we've talked about a lot on this channel are these process plays where when you've spent a fourth round rookie draft pick on a player like Puka Nakua and you have the opportunity to basically gain a free second round pick and re-roll as into another rookie, it's just a good process play because more often than not, you will come out on top. You're going to have some misses that way. Puka Nakua could end up being a great player and you will come out on the downside of that. But you've still made an ROI on your investment. And just one more quick thing. If we know cups coming we then kind of say to ourselves we've got maybe four or five weeks of of puka is it going to get any better than it is now in those four or five weeks and what are the chances of it getting any better than it is now probably worse right. out yeah. it's a very good point it's, it's process play we talk about a lot especially with these day three picks 
Uh, it's just best process to get that solid ROI return on your investment when you can. Um, Skyler, what do you think? Yeah, I'm also just not going to completely overreact. Uh, Puka was someone on our radar. We had him ranked as like the 410 and not, nothing crazy. Like a guy who should sneak into the back of the fourth just because uh, uh, mainly it was the opportunity more or less than his pro prospect for profile. Um, he profiled to play a little bit like Robert Woods, as you mentioned, but physically he's more like a, like a Stevie Johnson physically type player. Um, nothing really jumps off the page for this guy. You, you can't point to his production. You can't point to the athleticism. Um, really, it was just the opportunity was the big thing here for Puka, and hopefully he can continue to develop. But if you can turn and flip him for a second round pick, it's just a no brainer, right? A guy who went undrafted in a lot of leagues, picked up for Fab, a guy who might even be out there on your waiver wire right now, and a lot of your leagues who don't go further than like 25 deep. Um, yeah, if you can get a second for that, it's a good, great process play. A lot of people come at us in the comments when we make things like that every single year, and they tell us, well, why would you spend a trade him for a second when you got a guy who could be great? And it's like, it's, it's the process. You do this enough times you're going to be way better off in Dynasty. When you don't take things case by case in Dynasty, you tend to do better over time, right? That's when you're not making individual player takes, and you're just making process takes. I think that's when you get into good habits and you make good long-term decisions. That's where I fall with Puga here. Um, I think he's like he's a fine buy. Like If you're a competing team and you... Um, it's like a third round pick type thing. Like, I think it's fine. Like it's probably like fair value is a late third at this point until there's more proven, but that's where I was taking a player. Like Michael Wilson was the very last pick of the third round. So if you're trading Puka for Michael Wilson, it, that could end up being a straight up, like both guys have played one game in the NFL. Puka played in a game where he was playing against uh, Seattle without their best receiver. No proven guys on there. He had a, like 48% team target share, like very unsustainable marks mm. and in a very unique situation. And Michael Wilson played his first game in the league, buried a bunch of bunts, buried behind a bunch of mid on a team that had Josh Dobbs at quarterback, an absolute mess of a game. Like, sure, if you can make that swap, I can see good reason for both. Like, honestly, if you could trade, and this is a good clip for people to come back if Puka ends up being a star, like you could trade, Puka for Michael Wilson in a fourth or Michael Wilson in a third. I think that's also just a deal I'd cash out on. So I like the call there for you um, with Puka. We're just going to have to see how he's utilized, really. Um, I'm struggling to find. It's not a game I was watching intently because I was uh, on the Philly New England game. Um, I would like to see how many snaps he took outside versus inside and where mm. that went across for the whole team because i think that's an important thing for us to look into as to how players could work around cooper cup when he potentially comes back one note i will make is that with tyler higby i would expect more than eight percent of the team targets to go tyler higby's way i think that's something that i'd come to expect i mean van jefferson around 13 percent. that's probably sticky all year I would expect him to be around. That's about what I had Van Jefferson projected for the year. Uh, Tyler Higby will get more than 8% of the targets. I think that was that was a very odd thing to see there against a team that was soft against tight end last year. But 40% of the targets going to Puka, 21% to 2-2. We'll see what part of that is sticky. Because one of those guys could end up with like 20%, right? Um, I think it was at least optimistic to see that they both jumped over Ben Skoranek, who was literally just a guy. So yeah. situation to keep an eye on. But uh, there's no big overreaction here, guys. Please don't go out shooting seconds for Puka. We this we see big week ones and then guys disappear. It happens. Um, I'm rooting for him, though. We, we root for everybody over here. Uh, it was a fun day. It was a good outing. Um, I have him in like one or two spots, and I would dish him for a second, but I'm, I'm also just cool kind of seeing how this goes. Yeah, I think the if the price of entry to get in right now was a third, I would probably do that on most teams just to find out. But I have a feeling that... Uh, the price of entry is going to be a second, like at the yep. minimum everywhere, yep. which I'm probably just not going to do. Yep. Third is fair value. All right. But 